This film is part of the AHDB Dairy Dry Cow Management Series. We're going to look at how to administer dry cow therapy safely and effectively. The first thing we're going to do is look at the cows to go dry today with Richard and review each cow and to see what we need to do in terms of administering sealant alone or sealant and antibiotic dry cow. I've got here antibiotic dry cow therapy tubes, internal teat sealant tubes ready, got some red tail tape, so I've got everything here that I should need laid out ready. And then finally here, I've got a clear list of identified cows, drying off dates if they've had clinical mastitis, and crucially within easy reach of the cows on the platform. The cows are presented very cleanly to the parlour as you can see. Two of the last three cell counts above 200 actually. Yeah. Oh, and she had mastitis a couple of months ago. Okay, so yeah, she needs antibiotic then. Treatment. So everything gets a red tape then if it's going dry. Right. Two red tapes if they're having antibiotics. going to begin by administering the pre-milking teat disinfectant. Really important that we allow a good 30 second contact time to maximise cleanliness of the teat. We've applied the pre-milking teat disinfectant, 30 second contact time and a dry wipe. Now the next stage is to aseptically prepare the teats using cotton wool and surgical spirit. We should always prepare the teats furthest away first then the teat's closest to you. Um, and what we want to do is just gently restrain the teat and then swab the teat barrel with our cotton wool swab and see the teat's nice and clean. I then turn the swab over and pay particular attention to the teat end. So we're swabbing the teat end there. Important to do it this way, obviously, so we're not reaching past teats that we've already cleaned. Just gonna turn the swab over now, pay particular attention to the teat end. As you can see, we're working cleanly and rapidly. What I'm now going to do is administer the dry cow therapy in reverse order. Now that the teats are clean, we can move on to administering the intramammary tubes. So when we're administering antibiotic and sealant, that you don't have to pinch the base of the teat. Obviously, we're going to administer the whole of the antibiotic into the gland and then we're going to massage the gland after administering the antibiotic, ensure it's distributed throughout the gland. We're going to administer the teat sealant uh, in the reverse order. So this time we're going to start with the back right teat, which was the last teat we prepared. So we're going to do the closest teats to us. Partial insertion of the nozzle. You can actually hold it with your little finger if it helps. And notice I'm gently pinching the base of the teat to ensure that the teat sealant remains within the teat system. And then just letting it go, no massage at all of the, of the gland. Carry on going round now. So the next teat to do is the back left. Visualise the, the teat end, partial insertion, thumb and forefinger just gently occluding the base of the teat. We know from research and research based in the UK that has shown quite clearly in line with lots of other studies around the world, that internal teat sealants are significantly better than antibiotic at controlling and reducing the risk of new infection during the dry period. That cow's now been uh, dried off. All that remains now is to administer the post-milking teat disinfectant, and really important, leave her to stand for 30 minutes to allow the street canal to close. When they come off the parlor, they come on to some hard standing until we take them to the uh, dry cow yards and then after that I come back in the office and fill in all the necessary uh, medicine books for any cows that have been treated with antibiotics and inputting all the cows as being dried off so we know where they are in their lactation. I check the dry cows twice a day for signs of developing mastitis for the first week after drying off. As part of my routine I will check for indications of swollen quarters and overall cow condition. We strip out the teat sealant at the first milking post calving, ensuring we remove all the teat sealant. The benefits seen on this farm from using selective dry cow therapy are a reduction in antibiotic usage, which as well as saving money and reducing their overall antibiotic usage, also saves them time during the drying off process.
A key piece of advice from Richard Wells, herd manager here, is that during the drying off, focus on the job in hand with no other distractions. Dry cow management should not be considered in isolation, but as part of the overall plan to control mastitis in your herd. A structured approach, such as the AHDB Dairy Mastitis Control Plan, is strongly recommended. Working with a Dairy Mastitis Control Plan deliverer and using farm-specific information, such as milk records, clinical records and on-farm questionnaires, to identify the main factors contributing to mastitis, on-farm dry cow management can be tailored as part of the farm-specific set of practical recommendations. For more information and to find a plan deliverer, visit mastitiscontrolplan.co.uk or dairy.ahdb.org.uk forward slash mastitis. We hope you found this video useful.